you sleep better, you function much better. Mm -hmm. So sleep, I would say, is at the top of the list. Nutrients, you know, and there are, you can think macronutrients. And so your carnivores are only eating meat and your vegans are only eating plants and your, your omnivores, which is I think probably 90% of the world is eating a combination of those. But, you know, quality nutrients, I think that when I look at all of the nutrition literature and arguments out there, it seems that everyone can agree on one thing, which is that probably 80% or more of our nutrition should come from unprocessed or minimally processed sources. Minimally processed would require some cooking, but it'd survive on the shelf as opposed to packaged foods or highly palatable foods. So you've got sleep, nutrients, but then we should also put in micronutrients. And this is where maybe we'll get into a discussion about supplementation. I think that there's supplementation or supplements is a bit of a misnomer because it implies vitamin supplements. And people say, well, can't you get all that from food mm. or that whey protein? Isn't that just food? Wouldn't you be better off with a chicken breast? Okay, well, then we can talk about convenience and the you know absorption. Okay, but then there's this huge category of things ranging from the kind of esoterically named things like ashwagandha and shilaji and tongali and fadoji agresses, I mean, right? I mean, it sounds all exactly <laughs> all the herbal stuff, right? Yeah. But you're not going to get that from food. Yeah. Totally. So should we call them supplements at all? Yeah. So let's just say the second thing is nutrients and that includes macronutrients and that includes micronutrients as well. Mm -hmm. So those two things. Then the third would be movement, right? And this has also been an enormous transition in the last, I think, just five years, which is not just for people interested in bodybuilding or powerlifting or for competitive athletes, but now it seems everybody, including the elderly, understand that you need a combination of cardiovascular exercise and you need resistance training, whether or not it's with body weight or weights or machines, et cetera, that you need both. I mean, not a week goes by without seeing an article in one of the major publications out there, standard media, let's call it traditional media. It will be nice to them, traditional media that highlights some study showing that, you know, resistance training in elderly people can offset Alzheimer's or, you know, or that as our friend Peter Atia has pointed out so many times that many of the end of life creating injuries are due to people, older people stepping down the eccentric movements. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, so you need movement. That's the third category. Fourth, I will argue, and I like to think that maybe I've helped this movement, if you want to call it that, is light. In particular, mm -hmm. sunlight in the early part and throughout the middle of the day and trying to minimize the amount of artificial light that you're exposed to in the evening and late night hours, most of the time, because you have to live light. Just fundamental. And then the last category that's important is social connection, aka relationships. Let's just call it relationships because that can include relationship to self. Mm -hmm. So those things set up the core foundation. And I think one way to think about them is just as a list. Another is to think about them in terms of a, of a schedule basis. and. That's how I've really doubled down is I realize that every 24 hours, I need to invest something into each one of those things. Mm -hmm. So I think that, you know, 10 years ago or five years ago, or even two years ago, I used to think, okay, like what's the workout split or how am I going to eat for the next couple of months? You know, what am I trying to optimize for? Is it muscle? Is it fat loss? Is it just maintaining? Is it energy? Is it focus? That's all fine and good, but sleep, nutrients, exercise, light relationships, those really establish the foundation of what I consider to be all of the elements that create our ability to move as seamlessly as possible between the states that we happen to be in and the states we desire to be in. Mm -hmm. And when I zoom out and I think about what are the major struggles that I, and it seems most everyone deals with, it's like how to get more focused. Okay. So we can talk about, you know, what do you take? What's the supplement, you know, but you have to say, well, how are you sleeping? Have you done any exercise? You really always find yourself or I find myself taking 10 steps back and then moving through the sequence of five things before you can even begin to talk about whether or not taking three or 600 milligrams of alpha GPC and how often to do that and does it work? And yes, it works, et cetera. But those things really set the foundation. And so I like to think of those five things every single day. You have to re up on sleep every 24 hours or try to You have to re up on movement every 24 hours. You can go a day or so immobile, but you better move the next day. Right. Mm -hmm. And ideally you're moving seven days a week. Doesn't necessarily mean, trained to failure and running marathon seven days a week, you can Goggins your life or you can not Goggins your life. For those of you who don't know, I'm referring to David Goggins there, by the way, who seems to never stop moving. Although I just learned meditates two hours every night, yep. every night. And I'm inclined to believe when he says that <laughs> he indeed does that. You need nutrients, even if they come from stored sources, even if you're going to fast, you're going to fast for a day or two. Okay, fine. I've done that. I know you've done that. He's, I would put hydration under nutrients too. Mm -hmm. So you can, derive nutrients from stored 
fat, protein, etc., glycogen. Light, you're going to need that every 24 hours. You're going to need sunlight, even if through cloud cover. And you're going to want to avoid bright artificial lights at night. Not every night, but most nights of your life. And then that relationships one is the one that maybe we can go into in a little bit more depth at some point, but it requires focus. It requires attention every 24 hours. Hmm. Now that doesn't necessarily mean you have to see friends, talk to friends, text friends every 24 hours. Some people are far more introverted than others, but then you're working on your relationship to yourself in that solo time. And hopefully when you're spending time with others as well, that has some internal repercussions. So if I've doubled down on anything, it's the understanding that there is no so-called optimization. There is no real interest, at least from me, in trying to layer in other things unless I'm paying attention to each and every one of those things every 24 hours. You have to re-up on each and every one of those five things every 24 hours. And if you don't, you can get by for a day or two, but pretty soon you're going to hit that wall where you won't be able to do any of the things that most people are actually seeking to do. Mm -hmm. And the last thing I'll say about that is, you know, I think people hear a list of those five things and they think, gosh, okay, well, that must be nice for you, Andrew and Tim. You know, you wake up, you look at sunlight, you guys don't have kids, you know, like you don't have to worry about kids running around. You don't have to, you know, you can exercise. There are ways of layering in the, the protocols that re-up, as I'm referring to it, these five things every 24 hours that also include other people in your life, kids, pets, etc. Exercise certainly can include that as well. But I would argue that there is no showing up properly for yourself and for the other people in your life, unless these things are being handled. And it's not about becoming soft and cushy. It's about becoming quite resilient and effective.